Welcome back to another episode of Beginner C++. Last episode we went over how to basically make a class and the thing about classes is they're usually in their own file so I think this is a, a great time to jump right into how do you have more than one file in your C++ program because currently we've just had this main.cpp and the thing about having multiple files is well there's two different things about this that are pretty important in my opinion well maybe even three so I'll just jump right into it and start explaining those this will make more sense if I kinda of do it as I explain it so what I'm gonna do here is just go to where my main.cpp is and Visual Studio code allows you to do this with shift alt r or you can right click up here and go to reveal and explorer and you, it'll bring up your explorer your uh, file browser and show you it oh, I guess I should go to this folder in my uh, terminal here and the things I want to explain are if you make just a header file a header file is not compiled it is included into a file that compiles so if I make just a header and then include that in my main my compiling is actually going to be the same and what happens is everything in that header file is essentially part of this this main and I'll show you that as a quick example and that might be the more simple way to do it so let's make a new file we're going to use touch and we're going to call it calculator.h and as you see that'll make a new file called calculator.h it's completely empty but since it has the .h it is recognized as a C++ header file now if we open this up it's all blank but what we can do is we can take this entire class that we wrote in our main and just paste it over here and now we have a much more simple looking main.cpp because there's no longer a class but we are using this calculator and if we try to compile it right now what's going to happen is well main. it's, it's going to complain that it doesn't know what calculator is calculator is not declared in this scope if we include and we're going to use double quotes for this calculator.h this isn't this goes into another thing about includes that's important to understand is this is a relative path from your main.cpp so when I do this include it's going to look in the same folder for this calculator.h which in our case uh, already, already have some, which in our case is fine because it is in the same folder but if you're separating these into additional folders I'll do it I'll do it the Linux way with make dir uh, and make a directory called calculator and then start putting it on there some people do this with their classes then it becomes well first you gotta go into that folder so it would look like this now there's other cases where you might have to go back a directory and if you need to go back a directory it's a dot dot slash there are more things about that that get more advanced but I think that's enough for now so now we have included our calculator header so we're going to open it back up and it's the exact same code that was up above before when we include this it essentially puts all of this code right here where this include is so it's just like we have all this stuff except now we have it in one line that just points to the file that has it and we still compile our main.cpp the same and it compiles just as if it had all that code written where this include is so if we compile it it'll work fine just like it did before and we could run it and it'll do its thing what people usually do is they have an associated .cpp that goes with the header so there should be a calculator.cpp because if you just have headers this introduces a problem where if you use the same header and multiple different cpps then your compiler is going to complain because it's going to have the same code in multiple places so you really only want to have it in one place and that is the calculator.cpp so we're gonna change directory into that calculator folder that we made and if you have folders that's great if you do it all in just a flat structure that is also fine and that is often how people start out 
because it's just a little more simple without having to navigate into folders and through folders but it's actually pretty easy to, to do the thing navigating into folders if you if you're good with the change directory it's the same syntax in your include so we've uh, we've gone into that calculator folder let's go ahead and make another file calculator.cp and that should put it in there of course blank right now now the tricky thing with this is and I'll just open it and show you I'm gonna do these side by side does this allow there it is okay so now our calculator.h it has it currently has all the definitions of everything and what we actually want to do is only have the forward uh, declarations of these functions in the header and we want to have the definitions over here so this calculator uh, default constructor we actually want to end it right there but first let's go ahead and prepare this file before I start doing all, all, all that you do need to include your header that of course includes all of this code including the definitions what you normally do is you have only the declarations in your class and all the definitions over here so we turn this into just a def into a declaration and we'll have the definition over here now the thing about this is you do have to scope it into the class and you do that by taking the class name and use the scope operator of two colons now this will work for the constructor so the constructor is now properly built over here and the same with the destructor however our destructor does nothing so if you if your destructor doesn't do anything or if you have a construct that does absolutely nothing you can just fully delete it and it's still there but uh, it just doesn't do anything special because every class has to have one now this run function we're gonna put over here too so we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom of it and then we can actually delete all this and just in that so there's the uh, the uh, yeah declaration of the run function. It's defined over here, and also we still do have to scope it, and you scope it after the return type before the function name, just like so. So now that is also defined. This first and second number, we don't do anything with that. Just get entries that's private. We want that too. Now you don't have to note any sort of privacy. That's all done over here, where it's declared. So we don't need to worry about doing anything special because it's public or private when we're defining it. We just need to make sure we scope it. If you don't scope it, you're going to get an error that complains in your compiler. And this enum choice, uh, let's see, it declares what the enum is and then it instantiates a version of it. That's fine. And this now could work, but it's not going to yet, and that's because we got to do something a little different when we compile it, which I will show you. So when you now include ca the calculator.h, it's only going to get this header information, and it's not really going to know what to do with it because it doesn't. It's not. It doesn't. We're not telling the compiler to look at this file. We're only telling it to look at just the header, and the header is not smart enough to necessarily find the associated CPP. Um, we would have to somehow tell it about this too and then it's going to compile that so let's just uh, try to compile the main and see what kind of error we get oh I gotta go back a directory right oh I need <laughs> I need gotta do let's clear this um, you gotta change directory go back a directory and if I do print working directory it'll show where we're at I'll do ls to show our current files we've had this folder our main our executable okay so we want to compile our main and it's going to complain about some undefined references so it's getting these declarations but it's telling us it doesn't have the definition form and the definition form is over here so what you have to do instead is you have to compile with both of these like so and then calculator is in its own folder so we do have to do this calculator and if you hit tab it will auto complete so now this will compile both of these. We need to include IO stream here. It's complaining about C, it doesn't know what C out is, it doesn't know what endl is, and those are in IO stream. So it's not going to know about your headers from the main. So that's why it's complaining about that.
So I'm going to clear my terminal here and run that same compilation again. So let's run our a.exe and see if it works. And it does. What it's doing here is uh, it's taking both of these and turning these into a single executable of this a.exe. You will also sometimes see that you compile each object individually and then you link them both together. So that's a thing as well. And it uh, looks like we're not diving into that here, but usually when you have multiple files, that ends up being what's happened is you compile each object and then at the end, you link them all together to make your executable. But if you're just doing a, a straight line of all your CPPs, that seems to work fine and turn it into one executable. So when we get to a place where we have to build each CPP on its own and then link them together, I will show you that as well. But generally the objects end with a dot O and then you just do a final compilation of like them all together, which would look something like this. And that puts the objects together to make an executable. So there we go. You just have to tell it about all the files when you compile. So I think that's advanced enough for the compiling stuff. I hope that makes sense. Uh, and uh, we now do have multiple files. And if you if you want to separate out and build more classes to work with in your main, you can do that. And it's essentially rinse and repeat the same same thing. So you might be saying at this point, all right, well we still have this annoying function that's in our main. Can we pull that out as well? Yes, let's do let's do that as a final thing. Let's get out of that. See where we're at. Let's make a uh, we'll make a helpers folder, and then we'll go into that helpers folder, and we'll just make some we'll make a helpers file. So we're going to touch helpers.h and helpers.cpp. We'll just open those up. Visual Studio Code. There they are. I'll put this one over here. I'm going to close the calculator one for now because we're all done there. And what we'd want to do is essentially the same thing. We'd put our declaration of it here and we put our definition in the CP. That way it builds over here and we can include it in multiple files. If you only do in the header, you'll notice that you can only include it and one file or it'll complain that it has multiple definitions. And I did make a video about that previously, multiple definition of compiler error that is very common. And this will almost take care of it. We do need to, of course, include uh, helpers.cpp, or helpers.h, sorry. And what happens here is, well, I didn't capitalize this one because it's not a class. So a lot of you don't, it doesn't necessarily matter, but it's standard practice to capitalize your files if they hold a class and to not do so if they don't hold a class. Just This just holds a function, and we could keep adding more functions to it. We had more little helper functions we wanted for our main that weren't necessarily part of a class. And of course, we're going to need IO stream here. So we use CN and out. And rather than have this whole thing here, we just include helpers, oh, we did make helpers folder name capitalized. So now it knows what this function is, it knows what calculator is, and it's simplified down a lot. Oh, I should change this. Should have done that at the beginning. And now we can still compile just the same, but now we also need to include this helpers compilation so it compiles this file. Oh, helpers, helpers. Dot. Okay, I gotta make this wider so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so there we go. That should work. This will turn them all directly into one executable. And it looks like it's complaining about something here. Oh, I have to go back a directory, of course. I am in my helpers folder. So let's change directory. Go back a little bit. I'm gonna clear so this goes back to the top. And I'll run the same command now from the correct directory. And it looks like I had no errors, so we run it, and we're back in. Let's do a subtract. 5 minus 4, we get a 1. Do another. Nope. 
So it's properly going to all those. I hope you enjoyed this episode of how to work with multiple files and also how to, which also turned into a little additional information about compiling with multiple files in the most straightforward form where they turn or it turns multiple CPPs into one executable and how to scope properly to your files. Thanks for checking this out. I'll see you in the next episode. Keep on coding.